the first thing we need to do in quicksort is we need to pick a pivot. So the number I'm going to always pick is the first number. So I'm going to pick 5 to be our pivot. Then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to start comparing uh, 5 to the other side of the array. What we're going to have when we're finished one pass of quicksort is we're going to have all the big numbers down here and all the small numbers down here. And we're going to have the pivot in its correct location. So we'll start down here, we'll start comparing. So this is bigger than the pivot, so it's on the right side of the pivot, so it's good. This one, not bigger than the pivot, it's a small number. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap it with the pivot. Then we're going to remember where the pivot is, so that's still the pivot, it's still 5. And then we're going to start comparing from the other side of the array. So 2 is on a good side of the pivot, 4 is also less than 5. 0 is less than 5, 3 is less than 5, but 7 is not less than 5. So 7 is not on the right side of the pivot. So we're going to switch 7 and the pivot. We're going to remember where the pivot is, and then we're going to start going from the other side. So 8 is on the correct side of the pivot, 7 is on the correct side of the pivot, 6 on the correct side of the pivot, but 1 is not on the correct side of the pivot. So that means that 1 and 5 will switch. And at this stage, we have a special situation. We have finished one pass of quicksort. Everything on this side is less than the pivot, and everything on this side is greater than the pivot. In fact, this side happens to be sorted, but yeah. Um, and so what would happen is we would have one array here, which would then be further sorted. Five is in its correct location, and we have another array down here, which needs to be sorted. What we then would do is we would recursively quicksort. And so we would quicksort this array and this array. So we would assign the pivot, which I think was this one. I don't remember. Okay, it is now. And then we're going to start going from the opposite side. So one is not on the correct side of the pivot. So then we're going to swap them. We're going to remember where the pivot is. We're going to start going from the other side. So one's okay. 4 isn't, so we're going to swap them. Remember where the pivot is and start going from the other side. So, um, sorry, 4 is okay, 3 is okay, 0 is not okay, so we're going to swap them. Now we have a situation where everything on this side of the pivot is not in the correct is is on the correct side of it, so everything on this side's smaller. Everything on this side's larger. And so then the pivot is in the correct location. So what we're going to do is we'd go sort the other arrays that we've got. So we would assign the pivot here, and we would assign the going it from this way, and they're not in the right order. And then we'd further sort them. So those two would be in sorted order. Then we'd sort these two. We'd make the pivot. We'd go from the other side. Turns out they're all in the right order. So then they're sorted. We'd assign a pivot. We'd go the other way, all in the right order. So that one would be in place. We decide another pivot. We'd go at that side all in order. So these ones would be in place. When we have such a small array like this one, frankly, the first pass is the most important pass and the other passes are a little bit harder to trace. So when we trace quicksort, we're only going to be tracing the first pass of the array. When we're tracing it on paper, it'll go something like this. So this is my pivot. I'm going to underline it. And then I'm going to start going from this side. So. 9 is on the correct side of the pivot, 4 is not, so that means I'm going to swap 4 and 5, underline 5 so I don't forget it, and then I'm going to write everything else down. Then I'm going to move my arrow over so I can remember which side I'm going from. Yep, yep, nope. So then I'm going to swap them, there's my pivot, and 8 swapped, write everything else down, Draw on the arrow so I can remember which side I'm going from. Good, good, not good. Swap them. Write everything else down. Underline my pivot so I remember where it is. And start going from the other side. Less than five, less than five, less than five, less than five, not less than five and write everything else down. At this stage, everything on this side is less than the pivot, and everything on this side is greater than the pivot, so the pivot is in, correct, in place, and we have 
completed one pass of quick sort. That is all we would need to trace. You could then further trace this side and trace this that side, but with our small arrays it gets a little messy, so we'll only ever do one pass. Okay? Another way you can think of quick sort is that you can think of it kind of like as being a card deck and you're sorting things into two piles. So if this is my pivot, I can look at each card and decide if it's smaller than the pivot, smaller than the pivot, larger than the pivot. 15 larger than the pivot, 1 smaller than the pivot, 8 larger than the pivot, 20 larger than the pivot, 10 larger than the pivot, 5 less than the pivot, 2 less than the pivot, and 9 less than the pivot. And now you can see that I've got two piles, and these two piles can then be quick sorted. So if I remove that from the scene, I can start the process again. So I can pick a pivot, and then I can sort the things into two piles, bigger than the pivot, smaller than the pivot, bigger than the pivot, bigger than the pivot. And then I know that the pivot is in place, and frankly that one's in place too, and then I've got another pile, so I can start it again. So I've got the pivot, and I can go smaller than the pivot, bigger than the pivot. And you can see how we're repeatedly going down and down in the cards until we get everything all sorted. I wanted to show you another example of how to trace the first sort of quick sort. So I'm going to pick the pivot at the beginning and I'm going to start going from the other side. So 8 is on the correct side of the pivot, it's bigger, 1 is not, that means we're going to swap them. Remember where the pivot is, start going from the other side, less than 7, 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 less than 7. Now 7 is in its correct location and we have finished another pass of the array.